Hello there. So I wanted to do this animation uh, of uh, this magic trick uh, done by Yenifa in uh, The Witcher. Uh, this sun kind of uh, doing this thing and uh, making a photo out of it. Yeah, using Blender. And uh, yeah, let me show you what I'm going to do. Let's see this. Here, animation. Yeah, so I, I was able to simulate uh, the dust and uh, the, at least the way the animation looks. The only thing missing is that I would need way more partic particles here and uh, maybe increase my render resolution. Yeah, something I tried, uh, but uh, my, my computer would crash every time. But uh, this is uh, just a proof of concept that uh, you can do something like that. Let me just play that back again. And with more iterations, you can get it even to look much, much better. Let me just show you the animation. Uh, this is a, from a different camera view. So you have that dust, and then it goes up. So I also rendered a different version where I, also, where I just have the particles without uh, the, uh, the smoke or dust itself. Let me just show you that as well. Just to show you how everything would look. Now uh, there are a few issues that I needed to iron out as well. But, uh, but and see how the dust is forming. And uh, this this didn't bake uh, correctly because I was rendering as uh, I was baking. Let me just reduce some of the particles I have here so that. It's easy. Just reduce this from that to about. Okay, and I'm also seeing because I've just rendered this out. I didn't really play back the animation because it was a uh, one million particles. I couldn't really, my PC couldn't really handle the, that. And uh, just seeing a few issues here that I did not expect. Let me just see if I can get those fixed. Because uh, the particle emitter is meeting from within uh, the surface when it should, it's supposed to be uh, on the surface. So let me just fix that for a second. Then uh, just use that vertex group under I don't think that would work exactly as I expected it. So maybe let's try a different. Hey, let me first explain what I did, and then I can show you and maybe work out uh, the mistakes uh, that I'm seeing here that I didn't see when I, when I was doing this, because this is supposed to be on the surface, not inside the surface. So maybe I should just change the projection type here. increase uh, the particles to something meaningful so that we can easily see the, what's going on. You see how they are forming. See how they are forming uh, the ring? And uh, I use those particles to emit uh, the dust. Uh, so to make something look this good, uh, you would need way, way more particles than I used here. So. and see they're using quite a lot of particles and you can see have the same thing but uh, just lower resolution and uh, lesser particles uh, just so that my computer can actually handle that most of these and uh, let's talk about how I set uh, how I set this up. Let me just see. So I have.
have two camera angles here. Uh, the, was, the second one was to mimic uh, this camera movement, but uh, uh, because the render was taking too long, I just rendered this from one angle so that I can see everything clearly. So. have the dust move and then make the ring like that so let's talk about the setup itself um the way I set it up is uh, i had this surface here which was simply a mesh oh, with a displacement modifier let me first turn off everything here all the modifiers just to show you so it was a simple mesh uh, like this then gave it a displacement modifier but I didn't want the uh, this bottom side uh, to be displaced so I used a vertex group I, I gave this a vertex group and uh, use that vertex group for the displacement so only the, f the faces in that area in this surface in that vertex groups so the faces in that or vertices in that vertex group are not displaced that's why you can see it being used here so if i switch this around then the faces in that vertex group would be uh would be displaced but uh, the faces in not that not in that vertex group would not be then i gave it a subdivision surface and uh, yeah a collision property as well and a fluid property so bring this back so the collision property is so that is there so that these particles don't go through when they hit this surface and they just bounce up and uh, same with the fluid uh, modifier is a fluid of type actually it's this fluid of type uh, collision uh, so that the smoke itself or dust effect bounces around it doesn't just go through it then we have the particles themselves because i couldn't i wanted a lot of particles but uh emitting all the particles on this plane uh, the mo a more preferred setup would to, would be to have a layer of particles uh, settling from this surface all the way so you to do something like that you add a particle system and uh, remove all the velocity so the no, no, no more velocity and also remove uh, the gravity so that when the particles are emitted they just stay in one surface and then uh, you also would have to increase the lifetime something like uh, yeah, something low so that when this comes in uh, we have a, a wind and a turbulence force so whenever this wind blows it will just come and sweeps uh, the particles into this uh, force field but uh, you would need quite a lot of way more particles uh, for this kind of setup uh, because you, you see we are even leave, leaving some particles behind uh, some of these particles are uh, only touched on when the forces come near to them but uh, this would be the most ideal uh, way to set up everything uh, so to but to fill up this entire plane with particles would require you to have way more more, more particles uh, than my computer could handle but you can see it really really works better uh, so instead of doing that i decided to be a bit minimum and more efficient so i emitted these particles onto uh, this plane by the way if you're going with this this route you would still also need uh, to subdivide it uh, because you can see now all the particles are, are on a flat surface when our ground is not really flat so you would need to give this a shrink wrap modifier and, uh, shrink wrap select this as the target so that your surface gets that uh, deformation and uh, you would need to make sure that the particle settings as uh, the particle modifier is below uh, that shrink graph modifier so the particles are emitted are following that deformation as well so then you can do everything else there but uh, 
I did it this way. Um, I did the shrink wrap modifier. And uh, okay, I'm just realizing this now. Uh, my particle settings are above the shrink wrap modifier when they're supposed to be below. But uh, because these are this, these are small particles, you don't really see it that much. But uh, they're supposed to be onto the surface so that they can be emitted following uh, the path of. And I think you can see that uh, it looks way much better than if this is. Yeah, you can. I don't know if it's if you can tell. Hey, let me just increase uh, the size of the particles for a second here. I think they do seem like they are following the the, the surface, but uh, that could be simply because uh, the wind is blowing them onto the surface, uh, so it looks like they are actually being emitted from the surface. But uh, you should make sure that this is above below the shrink wrap. Uh, actually, this looks way much better. So you set up the particles. The way you set up the particles again, I just showed you. You just remove all the velocity. Uh, I added this small velocity because some of the particles were being emitted inside this surface and I didn't want that so I added in this, this normal velocity so that they have given up small velocity above uh, the surface so, so that none of the particles are pushed into the surface and uh, what else? I gave this some um, random rotation, uh, the surface some random rotation uh, so that they have some angular momentum. Uh, you make sure you have dynamic turn down and uh, increase the velocity for uh, so that you can have those particles uh, rotate. Then the other settings I used here, I just changed the render object uh, from hello, from a hello object to uh, this uh, plane here. Uh, I wish there was a better way to render a point in Blender because uh, these hello objects don't render. Uh, where are they? These. If, if you choose if you chose halos they will not render so but uh, I wish we could render these because you can control uh, the size and they don't really take up a lot of computation power uh, actually the size is somewhere under display because they don't really take up a lot of uh, CPU power than uh, a mesh like this and uh, that's why you see I'm using just three vertices uh, for this polygon so that it doesn't take up too much resources. So that's what I used here because we are, I was trying to render about a million particles and I ended up even reducing that because my computer couldn't handle that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Whatever object you're trying to use, make sure that uh, it doesn't have a lot of uh, polygons. A sphere would be more ideal here, but uh, as I said, a sphere would have a lot of vertices that would cause a few issues of its own. And then for the forces, how you make this part, control these particles to move. So first I animated this surface to move along uh, this other surface. And because it has uh, the shrink wrap modifier, it follows uh, that surface. And uh, then I parented this wind onto that surface. And just to make sure that all the particles don't move uh, and don't affect by the wind at the same time I give I give this uh, a fall off uh, you can see just make sure makes sure that uh, only the force only the particles within this range within this sphere are affected by that wind so that given that uh, push and then I have uh, this circle sphere uh, if you if you don't know how to use this, I made a tutorial about it. Uh, well, we made a ring of fire. Yes, yeah, so you can watch that, and uh, you will you will see how you can make particles follow a ring. But uh, the basics of it, you just uh, you just create a circle. Uh, make sure it's a curved circle or any type of curve. And uh, go to the physics tab and give it a force field. Make it as a force field and change the shape to curve.
curve then the particles will try to follow uh, the curve the curve's shape you can watch that tutorial it should take you through the basics or you can go to my second channel then money and watch the time lapse there so then what else